Both of the major parties, and we're talking about the United States here, hold their national convention during the summer before the actual general election. So the Republicans will hold their Republican national national convention, and the Democrats will hold their Democratic national convention. And it's there that they officially choose their candidates that will run against each other in the general election. In the general election. And a national convention for one of the parties will look something like this. This is the Democratic National Convention in 2008. You have all of the, dem the, the delegates over here, and everyone's all excited, and they start to cheerlead for their party and for their candidate. The Republican National Convention looks very similar. And although there's a lot of energy here, there actually isn't a lot of suspense. Going into the convention, we usually know already who the candidates for each of the parties are going to be. And that's because. Each of the states have their own selection process for picking a candidate. And as those selection processes, as we get the results from, we know how many delegates they're going to send to the convention and who they are going to or whom they are going to vote for. But there's two ways that they can select those candidates or those, those delegates at for the national convention. They could either run a caucus. They could run a caucus. Caucus or caucus. Let me spell that right. They could either run a caucus or they could run a primary. They could have a primary. And I'll start with primary because that's a little bit more intuitive. It's kind of like just a election that is based on party. For who do you? For whom do you want to be your nominee at? coming out of the national convention. So for any given state, they'll have both a Democratic primary and a Republican primary. And on the Democratic primary, let's say candidate A gets 40% of the vote on that, on that election. Candidate B gets 30% of the vote. And let's say candidate C gets another 30% of the vote. What will happen is, is that state's delegates on the Democratic side, so let's say that that state, just for convenience, let's say that they have 10 delegates. 10 delegates. On the Democratic side, that means that these delegates will go on to the National Convention and represent the different candidates proportionally. So out of these 10 delegates, 40%, or 4, will represent candidate A, 3 will represent candidate B, and 3 will represent candidate C when they go to the National Convention. On the Republican side, it's a little bit more nuanced. You could have similar results. A gets 40%. B gets 30%, and C gets, and let me do different letters to show you these aren't the same candidates. So let me, let me do candidates D, E, and F. So you could have candidate D, candidate E, candidate F. And let's say, let me just do the percentages slightly different for fun. So let's say you have 45% over here. Let's say you have 25% over here. That gets us, and then let's say you have candidate F with 30% over here. On the Republican side, it depends from state to state. Some states will do it similar to the Democrats, where the delegates represent the candidates in proportion to the votes they have, while some other states have it winner take all. And so, for example, in a winner take all, in a winner take all state, candidate D would get all 10 delegates. And the reason why states do that is it's a stronger incentive for a candidate to show up to that state if they feel like they're in the running. Because if they, if they throw enough money and marketing in that state, that's a big deal to take all of the votes. On the other hand, if you're a smaller candidate and you don't think you can take it all, it might be a disincentive for you to actually even show up at that state. And you might want to focus on the states where you can actually get some delegates. So that's all a primary is. It's really a, a kind of, you could view it as an election, that's held separately on the Democratic side, separately on the Republican side. And those are used by the state's parties to decide who, which delegates go to the national party and whom those delegates are going to vote for. A caucus, the point is the same thing, to figure out wh who who are your delegates that are going to go to the National Convention, and whom are they going to vote for? But the process is a little bit different. In a caucus, you essentially have people get together in these events, these caucuses, in different precincts. And the most famous of these are the Iowa caucuses. So in small precincts, you'll have groups of 50 to 100 people get together. And they have, and the different parties have different ways of doing, going about it. But they have a way, they, they, they have processes in place where people try to uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, market for different candidates. They, they, they 
campaign for different candidates. And sometimes they'll have a cutoff that if, if one of the candidates at one of the precincts don't get uh, at least 15% of the vote, then though the people who supported that candidate then will have to give their, their support to another candidate. So they make sure that every, all of the delegates represent at least a certain threshold of vote, voters. But there's different processes in place. But the bottom line is, is once they at each of these precincts, they'll select delegates. And then those delegates will then go on to the county conventions. And then those delegates at the county conventions, now these are representing more people, will then pick delegates to the district conventions. And then at the district conventions, they'll pick candidates onto the state conventions. And at the state conventions, they'll pick the final candidates that go on to the national convention. Now, the two most famous caucuses or primaries are the, the Iowa caucus, which takes place in Iowa. And you have the New Hampshire primary. You have the New Hampshire primary, which of course takes place in New Hampshire. And they're important not because they pick so many delegates that those delegates are going to tip the balance necessarily. These are both small states. They don't have that many delegates compared to California or Texas or Florida. But what's important about both of them is that they happen very, very, very early on in the primary season. And because they happen early on in the primary season, the candidates that come off with the lead here, it's easier for them to raise money because other people say, oh, I want to give money my money to a winner. Uh, you know, I don't want to give money to a candidate who's going to just you know, blow it and, and, and lose the money and lose, and lose the election regardless. So it gives you that. It also is a big signal for who's a front runner, because there tends to be dynamics for, for whoever comes in it wins or comes in maybe second place in the Iowa, or New, Iowa caucus or New Hampshire primary, that those are the people that everyone should pay attention to. They get more fundraising. It's kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy. More people all of a sudden take a more serious look at them. Now, the Iowa caucus, just to be clear, the primaries all happen in on one day. And you get, one, you have the polling results when people exit the polls. And then you also get the final results pretty quickly. This caucus process actually takes over takes place over many, many months, five months in the case of the Iowa caucus. And the results, the thing that the press focuses on is not this final not this final result of who, who are the actual delegates that go to the national convention. The thing that the press focuses on are the precinct the precinct conventions where people get together. Because coming out of those precinct conventions, the state parties get the information on how many candidates each delegate won going into now the county conventions. And this, this is the indicator that the press and the media and everyone else likes to use to see who's a front runner in that specific pro party's primary. And the reason why the Iowa caucus in particular gets so much importance is because it is the first caucus. These results come out before anything else. The New Hampshire primary, this is the first time that you have the direct voting for candidates. So you're getting, I guess, you're getting a more direct number. You're not having it distorted or maybe cleaned up depending on how you view it by all of the different processes that might take place within the precinct conventions.